What if I told you by 2027, the most powerful AI models on Earth won't actually be on Earth? Yes, Google's next moonshot is literally a space shot. AI chips orbiting above us and crunching numbers at the edge of space. Sounds ridiculous, right? Well, so did self-driving cars, reusable rockets and large language models that can pass bar exams. And yet, here we are. Hi, I'm Nishita and you're watching Geeks for Geeks, your one-stop solution for all coding-related problems. And in today's video, we're going to dive deep into Google's absolutely wild plan to launch AI-optimized hardware in space. We'll talk about how it works, what it is, why it matters, and what this means for the future of engineering and AI. Because by 2027, your favorite AI model might not be running in a data center. It might be running in a low Earth orbit. Chapter 1, Why Space? Let's start with the big question. Why why the heck would anybody put AI chips in space? And the answer is just three words. Cooling, power, and bandwidth. On Earth, data centers are like giant power-hungry beasts. Keeping them cool consumes more electricity than some small countries. But in space, we'll get near-infinite cooling through radiation, constant solar energy, nearly zero land costs, and surprisingly, faster global routing. Space-based compute nodes means your AI interference can hop across satellites instead of traveling on land through terrestrial cables. That's like swapping a local train for a bullet train. So what exactly is Google trying to do? They're designing specialized AI interference chips that are optimized for low power, high efficiency, radiation resistance, edge AI workloads, and ultra high throughput laser communication. Think of them as space-bound tensor processing units. That's TPUs, but in orbits. These chips will sit on small satellite clusters, basically mini data centers powered by Google's cloud platform. And before you think this is sci-fi, it's not. Google already runs world's largest AI training clusters. The only thing that's left to do is take it off the planet. Chapter 3, the technology. All right, now let's talk about the engineering because sending any silicon into the orbit is pretty easy. Keeping it alive is the real challenge. In space, these chips face extreme temperature swings, micrometeoroid impacts, cosmic radiations, and zero pressure vacuum environments. To solve exactly this, Google is working on radiation hardened chip design using redundant logic and error correcting memory. They're also working on passive cooling fins that take advantage of infrared radiations. Then we have thin film solar arrays that unfold like origami. And last but not the least, they're working on optical intercept satellite links that move data at tens of Gbps. It's like Apple Vision Pro meets Starlinks meets floating supercomputers. So what do you actually use these space AI chips for? Turns out they are workloads that love space. First up, we have real-time Earth monitoring. We have fire detection, ocean analysis, and weather patterns. Then we have space traffic control, which predicts collisions between satellites. We have global communication routing, where we have faster AI models for translation and voice. And then we have federated AI, where data stays local, but only model updates move. And last but not the least, low latency interference for global apps. Imagine a WhatsApp call auto-translated by a satellite in 50 milliseconds, or a drone in the middle of Pacific asking a satellite for AI navigation help. Google said their first test cluster could launch by late 2026 with their first functioning orbiting AI compute layer by 2027. That's two years from now, meaning the cloud wars won't be AWS versus Azure versus Google. It would be Earth versus Orbit. And Google isn't alone. Amazon has Project Kuiper. Microsoft is working on Orbit Edge Compute with NASA. Even SpaceX has hinted at AI-enhanced Starlink nodes. By 2030, space might host AI training clusters, autonomous research labs, zero-gravity robotics farms, and even off-planet LLMs. Risks and questions. Of course, this isn't all sunshine and solar arrays. There are some very big questions. What if a satellite gets hacked? Who controls orbital compute? How do you repair space hardware? What about the space debris? This is Wild West, just 300 kilometers above our head. But here's the crazy part. AI in space isn't just a new idea. It might be the next logical step. As AI models grow from billions to trillions of parameters, Earth simply might not have that cooling energy and physical space to hold all of that compute. In 2020, the cloud moved from your laptop to data center. In 2027, it's moving from data center to the orbit as we look up. So, AI chips in space by 2027. Crazy? Absolutely. Impossible? 
Absolutely not. Google is betting on a future where computers planetary, borderless, orbital and always above us. If you want more deep dives on the next wave of AI, hit the like button, subscribe and comment. Take me to the orbit and I will see you later.